All right, welcome to Spiral Dynamics Stage Beige. This is the first stage of Spiral Dynamics. This is the first stage that we have to understand in our journey of understanding human psychological development and the growth and evolution of human consciousness. All human beings begin at stage beige, which is the most basic and primitive stage. So stage beige is a me stage. And if you haven't already seen my intro to spiral dynamics video, check that out. In that video, I explain the whole model and give you some of the overarching trends and also explain why it's so significant and important to understand. Uh, so, okay, so we're in stage beige and this is the first stage. It's a me stage. And what that means is that there's two types of stages in spiral dynamics. There's a pendulum swinging back and forth from me to we, from me to we. So selfish to self-sacrificing for the sake of the community. So we begin with a me stage and that's beige, which is characterized by the words survival sense. Okay. So beige really just cares about basic survival. And I have a quote here that I ripped right out of the spiral dynamics book, which explains the life conditions that cause stage beige to emerge. This is the, the life that stage beige lives in because remember every stage is a survival strategy and some stages are better optimized for certain survival environments than other stages. All right. So the life conditions here, stage beige says my existence centers on survival. Energy is devoted to staying alive and meeting the needs of my physical being. So I am not hungry or thirsty. I must reproduce my kind. So I respond to sexual urges as they occur. I do not know what you mean by future laying plans, saving for a rainy day or self. My body tells me what to do. And I am driven by senses talking to my brain, not so much by a conscious mind. All right. So stage beige is basically basic biological survival. It is a pre verbal stage. So someone who exists in stage beige does not really have access to any type of higher mind thinking, conceptualizing language. It is very basic and stage beige functions by their senses. All right. So stage beige relies heavily on the senses and is very animalistic. So kind of like an animal, um, their, their survival is automatic. So there is no conscious decision making that's going on in stage beige. It's very automatic. So I feel hungry. Therefore I'm going to go find food or I feel thirsty. So I'm going to go find water or I have to pee. So I'm going to go pee wherever is most convenient. All right. So there's no social skills in stage beige. It's almost like an animal. So who exists in stage beige? What are some examples? So people who have very strong stage beige value system are newborn babies, infants, senile elderly people. So people who have brain trauma, so maybe Alzheimer's or perhaps a brain injury, like a head injury, right? So people who um, don't have access to a functioning brain basically have very strong stage beige values, which is basically feed me, keep me clean and uh, give me food basically. Also some other examples of stage beige are brain trauma victims and people who have severe psychological disorders. Um, so perhaps people with severe autism or maybe even cerebral palsy or anything that will affect the brain to the point where 
there is no access to complex brain mechanisms. And also ancient cavemen is a really good example for us to understand stage beige. I'm talking about a hundred thousand years ago, the, the classic cavemen archetype where they're basically, they carry around big clubs and they just, they have no language. It's just, ooh, 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 right? Give me food, right? And uh, they literally live in caves and all they care about is staying warm and finding food. All right. And uh, it's really hard to find examples of stage beige today because um, we normally in our modern societies have a lot of red, blue, orange, and green. But you can find stage beige perhaps in very poor uh, people, like homeless people. I live in downtown Toronto and as I walk down the streets, I see homeless people and for these people, the stage beige value system is very strong. It's very prevalent because that helps them survive throughout the day and survive throughout the night. Okay. It's important to keep in mind that we're not judging stage beige as being the lowest stage. This isn't a hierarchy of value. This is a, a hierarchy of value systems. All right. So stage beige isn't bad or it's not stupid. It's just the most effective value system for surviving at the basic physiological level. All right. So stage beige is very instinctive. Um, they just want to make it through the day and they have a very weak sense of separate self. So stage beige has not yet made a very strong subject object differentiation. And that, gets us into the first quality of stage beige, which is that stage beige is non-conscious. This is very important to understand. If you want to understand human consciousness, you have to first understand that when we start out in life, we have not yet made the distinction between me and the world. So if you take a baby and you show them their reflection in the mirror, they can't recognize themselves because they haven't yet made that realization or that distinction between me and my environment. All right. And, uh, there's a quote by Ken Wilber that I ripped right out of the spiral dynamics book, which goes like this Don man, which he's referring to like cavemen or the beginning of human consciousness. Don man began his career immersed in the subconscious realms of nature and body of vegetable and animal and initially experienced as indistinguishable from the world that had already evolved to that point. All right. So in stage beige, it's very difficult. Uh, there is no distinction between self and other, or if there is, it's very weak. All right. So this is a very important insight right here that I'm about to share with you. Let's imagine this line here. This is the ground of being. This is the oneness of existence. This is like the, the primal consciousness. All right. This is all of reality. This represents the entire universe, the oneness of the universe. All right. And we start here in life. We start here at stage beige. This is beige. Okay. This is unconscious union. You're unconsciously unified with the ground of being. There is no separation between this object and this object. Beige is just like, kind of like an animal. Just give me food. <laughs> okay. As we progress along the spiral stages, what begins to happen is there's a subject object distinction. So this, this line here, this is the self, this second line, this arc, this is the self differentiating itself from the oneness of being. All right. 
So the self is becoming differentiated. And there's a, a peak around right here. There's a peak. Okay. So up it from beige, then we're going to purple, blue, uh, red, blue, and then at the peak is orange. Okay. So at stage orange, we have maximum subject object differentiation. So the individual self is is completely separate from the world. And that's why orange loves science. Orange loves studying reality objectively. And orange doesn't yet understand that the observer, the one who is studying reality is enmeshed in reality because orange is the maximum subject object differentiation. Okay, so the, the consciousness is completely separated from the world. And this is our entire society. Most people listening to this video are at stage orange, where you believe you are in the world, but the world is completely separate from you and it has nothing to do with you. It's like I'm an organism and then the world is, is something else. It's, it's different. It's separate from me. It's a physical, objective, material system. All right. I talk about this a lot more in my video, deep insights from developmental psychology. But as we continue, uh, this, the, the self starts to deconstruct itself. So up until orange, we're constructing a separate self. We're constructing a separate self. We're building a self identity, which is at its peak in orange. And then as we get to green, yellow, and then eventually turquoise. We are now on the path of deconstructing reality. We're deconstructing the mind. We're deconstructing our sense of self and we're ending off back in now conscious union with the ground of being. So we begin unified with reality, but unconsciously, we don't know. We're just like a stupid animal, basically. Then we construct a separate self, we build communities, and then we, we start to study the world, we do science, all that stuff. This is the max subject object differentiation. And then we're deconstructing the self into turquoise. Okay, this is a very big picture view. This little model here will help you understand what is going on here in reality. Your life is, you were born into the world, you, you create a self, you create an ego, a self identity, then you, we begin deconstructing it. Green starts deconstructing rules and boundaries. Yellow starts deconstructing ideas and conceptual frameworks and turquoise eventually deconstructs the idea of self and the idea of subject and object again is unified together as one where you realize you're one with the universe and this isn't just an idea but it's actually a truth a, a, um, a an experience it's not just a concept it's actually true you are actually one with reality and it's not just an idea. It's a, it's a way of being. All right. That's a little big picture explanation of what's going on here. And that's why it's important to understand beige. So beige is non-conscious. They have unconscious union. And also um, beige has very strong primal intuition. Strong primal intuition. Uh, which basically means is that since beige relies on the senses so heavily, the main thing that allows beige to survive is, is its sense of sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. They have a, an extremely strong, uh, uh, set of senses. So there is an example of war veterans who spent a month alone in the jungle. And after they came back, they 
reported that their sense of hearing, their sense of smell, their sense of sight was way stronger. They could hear little things in, in the jungle. They were able to, they were way more sensitive to smelling and their eyesight was more clear. They were able to see farther and it was more vivid. The reason why is because in, if you're living in the jungle, your beige value system activates very strongly because those are the survival conditions in which beige is most useful. You're literally living in the jungle. You constantly have to worry just about making it through today. All right, so uh, you need to have those senses on point. You need to be able to hear little rustles in, in the leaves. You need to be able to see in far ahead if there's predators or if there's prey or if there's food, right? You need to be able to constantly pay attention. And this creates a kind of primal intuition as well, which is very cool. Um, beige, since it is unified with the ground of being, uh, they also have a, a kind of like a primal intuition, which means like, have you ever experienced, you've been sitting on the subway and then you experience someone you feel like is looking at you, you feel like there's eyes that are looking at you? That's an example of your innate beige that it's being triggered. So it, it literally, you it literally sense eyes that are looking at you. Uh, and all of us have this. Um, also, uh, what's so interesting about this primal intuition is that you are able to hunt extremely well. So if you're a hunter or a fisherman, my dad's a fisherman and I go fishing with him sometimes. And in order to catch a fish, you need to tap into your intuition, your primal intuition. You need to think like a fish. You need to be able to process the information in the environment very quickly. And it's uh, that's that's where your intuition comes in. So if it's sunny outside, for example, and it's really hot, you're going to think, okay, if I was a fish, I would like to be in the shade. All right. And as a fish, the reason why I want to be in the shade is because that gives me safety. That gives me protection. That keeps me cool. And there's also more prey. There's more other fish to eat in that little area. So if I was a fisherman, I wanted to catch a fish. I would go fish, drop my line beside a log or I'd go drop my line near some plants, some underwater foliage, because that's where a fish is most likely to be. The same is true if you're a hunter and, and you're hunting deer, right? So when I fish with my dad and he's, he's on the water, he's not really making rational, logical decisions about where to go try and drop his line, but he's, you, he's more so feeling it out. He's connected to his intuition and he's feeling the water. It's like, oh, where, where do I feel like the fish are today? Based on the moon, based on the sun, based on all kinds of different factors, your intuition can crunch so many different variables and give you like a feeling. And then if you follow that feeling, that'll give you success basically. So this primal intuition is key for hunting and also for staying safe from predators. Because if you're in the jungle and you feel like something is wrong, there's like all, all of a sudden you just feel scared. Maybe it's because there's a freaking jaguar that's that's hunting you and stalking you, right? So this is something that uh, like deer will rely on very heavily, right? If they they feel like something is off, uh, they just run, right? They don't ask a question. They don't make a, a logical, rational decision. They just follow their senses and their intuition. All right. And stage beige also likes to uh, form small bands. So if we're talking about the social structure of stage beige, there really is no social structure because it's a pre-verbal stage and they basically have no ability to socialize at all. It's very autistic in that way. Um, which means it has no social skills. But what beige might do is form small bands of maybe three or four humans 
and you can imagine like cavemen staying in little groups of three or four people with the unspoken goal is to survive and to reproduce basically so stage beige has this sixth sense and they're able to feel where their band members are right so there was a a cool study that uh, the founders of Spiral Dynamics discovered was that in the ancient tribes and even in many of the bush tribes today, most of them are very stage purple, but they're very close to beige and they rely on beige very heavily. They have like a sixth sense where they intuitively feel and they know where the other tribe members are. And this is something that has evolved probably because it's very effective for hunting and for keeping each other safe as well. If, if I'm, let's say, a hunter in the jungle, I need to know where my other humans are because they're on my team and we got we to gotta coordinate to kill a deer. Okay. And so, for example, when a mom uh, is with her child, she intuitively knows where her child is at all times. It's just a feeling. It's just a sixth sense. She literally knows where her child is. And if she doesn't know where her child is, there's a serious problem. And she's going to have a panic attack. All right. So, Beige will form these small bands. These aren't yet, like, social bands, like tribes. That more uh, evolves in stage purple, which we'll talk about right now. So, right now, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, how to deal with stage beige okay this is very important because uh, one of the main reasons for learning spiral dynamics is that we're learning how to care for and how to deal with all of the stages how to make them feel safe secure how to give them what they need so beige needs uh, basically tender love and care So when you're dealing with people who are in stage beige, let's say, for example, you have a non-for-profit group and you are helping to feed the children in Africa. Because uh, if you've ever seen those commercials of the, the children that are starving from hunger in Africa, it's very sad. And naturally, you want to help those children. And you'll find a lot of stage beige in those third world countries and also many countries that have been ravaged by war, right? So stage beige is kind of can be like the fallout from war because in many cases, the, uh, the entire infrastructure of whatever city was affected by the war is completely destroyed. There's rubble everywhere. The, all the infrastructure is destroyed. There's no toilets. There's no access to food. There's no access to water. There's no access to any type of sanitation or anything. In these areas of the world, like maybe some places in the Middle East and even in Africa, the stage beige needs are extremely strong. All right? And many people are basically existing in stage beige. So what they need is help. They need to be given food. They need to be given medicine and care. They need infrastructure that's to be built for them. All right, so whenever you're dealing with stage beige in a society, if your society has large chunks of stage beige, normally what happens is this just gets swept under the rug. Because this is a real ethical problem where we don't really know how much money, time, and energy should we put into, in, into helping people who are in stage beige. And in a lot of third world countries, the government is extremely corrupt, mostly stage red. And do you think, state, do you think these lower corrupt governments really care about giving, you know, helping people who are in stage beige, giving people free food, and free toilets and free water, all this stuff. The lower stages like red and even blue really don't care about this and they'd rather just sweep it under the rug. 
an example is that if you've ever walked down the street and you found and maybe you you were downtown and you see homeless people on the street and normally what we do is we want to help them but we, we aren't really in the position to help them um because what they need is they need a shelter they need food and water and i don't have that when i'm just walking down the street so what we do is we kind of just repress it we sweep it under the rug and we just don't think about it okay and this this happens a lot with stage beige so uh, you need to give them tender love and care and you need to actually proactively help them so if if you're dealing with let's say a, a war ravaged child in africa you can't ask them, hey, do you want some food? Because they usually can't even speak because they're just living in a state of survival. So you have to give them food. You have to often feed them. You have to give them med medicine. You can't ask them to take medicine. You have to actually give it to them. The same with food and, and with bathrooms. And, and if you, you can't tell them where the bathroom is because in a lot of cases... In, if you're in a very strong stage beige state, you can't handle mental symbols. The mind yet isn't able to conceptualize reality. It's just pure senses. So someone in stage beige, in a lot of cases, like uh, a child who has severe autism or a, a developmental disability, you have to actually take them to the washroom 50 times and then eventually they'll learn where the washroom is. It's just operant conditioning. So you can't logically tell them what to do. You have to just condition them, kind of like you're training a dog. All right. So, um, yeah, so they need tender, love, and care. And uh, as a society, uh, you need to solve the stage beige needs of your people. Okay, so you need to build infrastructure. Let's, let's write, build infrastructure Can okay, you need to solve the basic needs. And my markers get in the way. The reason why is because if your population is stuck dealing with where to find food, where to poop, uh, dealing with pests and cockroaches and, and rats because nothing is clean and there's garbage everywhere, then your society can't function because that's the basic level. It seems obvious, but a lot of us who live in the West, we live in stage orange and green societies, we've already solved a lot of these basic needs and then we take it for granted. All right? So a lot of... Uh, a lot of um, let's say uh, government agencies will they'll go to Africa and they'll try and install democracy or they'll go to the Middle East and they'll try and you know overthrow their government and just install a democracy right but those countries they don't need democracy <laughs> what they need is some freaking toilets so that people aren't shitting on the roads they need access to clean water so they're not drinking disease ridden water with like parasites in it so that's why spiral dynamics is so important because you got to solve the people's basic needs as they arise and if just for your own life as well make sure your environment is clean if you want to integrate your internal beige you need to solve your environment so clean your environment make sure you have water available clean food available clean water and that what that does is that frees up energy so that you can work on your higher stages. Okay, so if you want to help people evolve out of stage beige, you got to solve those basic needs first before you start teaching them quantum mechanics or spirituality or whatever. All right. Um, let's talk about um, when stage beige is exiting. So we're almost done here. We're talking about now the upper ceiling of stage beige because every stage reach reaches a limit it reaches a ceiling and then uh that uh requires the new higher stage which in this case is purple to emerge so when does purple start to emerge we're going to talk about this more in the in the next video 
but stage beige, we're exiting when your survival needs are met and your energy starts to free up. So if you're, let's say, loose band of a couple members, if you guys are doing a really good job of stockpiling food, if you guys are hunting successfully, and now you have free energy, you don't have to worry about hunting all the time. Now you just kind of have to sit around and learn how to socialize. Okay, because beige has no social skills at all. There's, it's pre-verbal. So stage purple is... Uh, is when the social needs start to emerge, when humans learn how to socialize with each other, to interact with each other, to relate to each other. So stage beige uh, starts exiting when there's a subject and object distinction. When the human being starts to realize more, oh, I exist, and this is my environment, and this is me. Okay, that breeds stage purple, because now, you are re you you become conscious of the outside world. You're actually aware that there is such thing as me, and there is such thing as the outside world. And that is actually terrifying because the outside world is very scary. There's all kinds of things that can kill you. There's giant snakes. There's saber tooth tigers. There's cars. Right? Probably not in the ancient times. But all kinds of things can kill you. So what you need now is emotional security. And you need safety. You need to feel safe. Okay. And that's when the, the tribes start to emerge. We start to build more complex tribes with 20 or 30 members. And as, as we start to... Stage Beige learns about cause and effect. Which basically means... If I eat this plant, then my stomach will hurt. But if I eat this berry over here, that will make my stomach feel better. Because stage beige has no sense of cause and effect. It doesn't understand the world in terms of causation. That's why it has no conceptual ability. There's no language. There's no intellect that's going on. But when that starts to develop because the basic needs are solved, then we start to move into stage purple, right? And as, as we develop emotions, stage beige starts to develop emotions, like act like when emotions start to develop that are just beyond hunger and thirst and fear, but stage purple now starts to attach meaning to objects attach meaning to people attach meaning to places and sacred rituals so whenever the mind is now able to attach meaning and feeling to an, a part of reality then we're moving beyond beige also we talked about the social needs and as competition of of, of your food sources competition of your mates and your territory as that increases now we need the ability to socially um, interact so that we can make a decision about who gets what food and who gets what mate and territory and everything. So in order to coordinate, uh, we need to be able to have social skills. All right. So uh, that's all for stage beige. Uh, the next stage is stage purple. We've reached the limit of beige. So now we're going to be talking about stage purple in the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this was Spiral Dynamic Stage Beige, uh, the basic instinctive stage. Okay, this is uh, this is where all human beings begin, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some amazing insights. Uh, stay tuned for Stage Purple. That's uh, the next video that will be out in a couple days. Uh, if you're watching this later, click over here. That's Stage Purple, and now we're gonna be learning about tribes. We're gonna be learning about social bonds. We're going to be learning really about the, the birth of human consciousness. Okay, so when the human being becomes conscious, uh, it's, it's in a tribal setting. Okay, and it's super cool. Uh, purple is extremely interesting because like I said, we're learning about human consciousness and the birth of it. Um, stay tuned also for red, blue, orange. As we progress in this series, 
each episode will become more and more interesting. It will be more and more practical. And as finally, when we get to yellow and turquoise, I absolutely guarantee you that your mind will be completely blown. Okay. There's a lot of deep insights that we have to go into. Sometimes when people explain spiral dynamics, they just gloss over it. But that's not the point of this series here. The, when you really deeply understand spiral dynamics with all the little nuances and subtleties and insights, then your consciousness is going to completely shift and you're literally going to see the world in a totally different way. And you're going to be a much more effective human being and a much more conscious human being as well. So if you're interested in understanding reality on some of the highest levels, stay tuned for this series. New episodes uh, are on the way and I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, stay tuned for the next one.